we met the uh, gypsy that owned him, he, uh, he told us he was a one of. Uh, well, obviously what he meant was he was a one of a kind. The Gypsy Vanner Society uh, was formed by my late wife and I on November 24th, 1996. We chose to embrace these horses because we had spent a lifetime loving and understanding animals in general. My late wife and I uh, sh shared the same passion as children. We were both horse lovers and we had gotten away from horses for a while and we just didn't feel like we had any choice. Even though the question came up as to whether we should embrace them or, or not take on the challenge, we knew the answer right away. help on a farm fluctuates somewhat with constant hay that needs to be put out so it takes a few people we get by with part-time help it's a lot of work you know our daily routine here is uh, of course the first thing we feed horses and then uh, and then we uh, uh, we clean paddocks uh, we drag with a tractor and a drag on the back we have to uh, clean all the stalls uh, for the horses that are inside the barn and it's a uh, day in and day out. A lot of work. The transition from owning various animals into the ownership of these particular animals was uh, a moment in time in 1995 when my late wife and I saw one horse uh, began a journey to understand it. The journey was, uh, was extraordinary. It was life-changing. It was life-altering. We saw one horse and learned it belonged to a gypsy. Spent that day in a gypsy camp. Through his invitation, became the first Americans to ever attend the oldest gypsy horse fair in the world. And uh, for 10 days, we studied every gypsy that bought or sold a quality looking horse and then began a journey to understand gypsies and their horses. There's only 20% of the horses that gypsies raise are a breed. 80% are a type and they're raised for a very different reason than the breed. The first horses uh, of this breed were conceived in Great Britain, England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Soon after World War II, there was a vision born to create the perfect caravan horse. Smooth-legged genetics in it. Uh, hair or feather is called an additive or cumulative gene. You must breed hair to hair to increase or maintain hair. My veterinarian said to me, I implanted a mule in Puerto Rico and she made the greatest equine mother I've ever experienced. And I thought mule moms, they can't have babies, but they have all the parts to have a baby, they just can't have their own. And a mule, because it's a hybrid, it has what's called hybrid vigor. Hybrid vigor means that it's stronger, lives longer, it's smarter. It has a heightened sense of self-preservation, but it has a heightened desire to nurture. So here's a, a wonderful mother who can't be a mom. The breed as it was intended evokes feelings from anyone who sees them that are very emotional. The future of the Gypsy Vanner Horse is, uh, I think it'll be recognized as one of the most beautiful breeds in the world. I think it'll be recognized as one of the most talented breeds in the world. They're smart, they retain their training, and, and uh, so I think there's a, there's a bright future for the Gypsy Vanner Horse in any number of disciplines. <laughs>